Welcome once again to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Our next conversation now is moving to discussing the challenges um, the Naira currently is dealing with, uh, but from a slightly different perspective. Uh, we're asking why there is more and more people losing faith in the Nigerian currency and saving their currency or their money rather in the dollar, um, either through Bitcoin or you know, uh, cryptocurrency or whichever you choose. Um, and we're speaking this morning with uh, an economist, Gospel Obili. Uh, good morning, Mr. Obili. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Good to have you here. Let's, let's bring you in first with discussing um, the loss of faith in the Naira and where you think it's coming from. Why do you think it is, you know, at this stage currently? Oh, well, it's, um, it hasn't been a day thing. It's been happening... Um, over the years, all right, it's been built up around the loss of faith in the Naira. And um, that's because we see how the ex exchange rates are um, diverging in the sense, all right, and how that has um, presented itself in form of a ripple effect on the Nigerian economy, on cost of goods and services, all right, and even engagement, and um, as well as how the central bank has openly sought to manage the um, the currency. So we've seen a situation where um, some items have been banned over the years. We've seen a situation where crypto has been banned. We've seen a situation where fintechs have been banned. So um, by inactions or actions of uh, the monetary institutions, as well as clear-cut poor mismanagement of the Naira and how it permeates into the Nigerian economy, uh, people are sought to lose faith and um, are currently seeking for a plan B or even plan C around their financial management, personal financial management. All right, um, Mr. Obele, regarding this issue, many, many Nigerians are asking this question online. Um, should I save my money in Naira or dollar? And I know some Nigerians who claim that they do not even have any Naira in the Naira account, and they actually um, buy dollars and save their money in dollars. Um, I want you to help us break it down in detail as to, first of all, the advantage and disadvantage of Nigerians doing that. All right, so it would interest you to know that, I mean, we had said this thing several times, you know, about two years ago, I was also on an interview with, um, I think, Irene on Plus TV, then Irene, and I mentioned this, that very soon Nigerians will start saving in dollars. And this is the reason why. Number one um, is the fact that people have come to realize that on a month-on-month -month basis, all right, their income levels are shrinking. Sorry, their disposable income levels are shrinking, all right? They're probably getting poorer, all right, in the sense, and, uh, and the purchasing power of what their incomes can buy or what they can spend on is currently shrinking, all right? And the people have also grown to become more aware of the worsening state of the Nigerian economy and um, its finances in the sense and how that impacts on the Naira, all right? So... Um, Mr. Obele, we, we seem to be losing you there. Uh, they, they, Okay, can you hear me this? Yes, yes, please go ahead. All right, so there's been an outcry for a plan B for a long time right now. And um, a lot of times people have sought to crypto or real estate as a form of trying to hedge against risk, all right, um, the Naira risk and all that. And let me just simply put, what 5,000 Naira could buy in March 2021? can simply not, not buy now, all right? That's, that's the, how bad things have gone, all right? So people are now looking for more creative ways to save this money and all that. Now, on the advantage, let me, let me start from the advantages of saving in dollars, all right? First of all, we saw it coming. Uh, secondly, um, it is a form of um, strategy to hedge against the worsening state of a Naira. So meaning that since the Naira is primarily pegged against the dollar and transactions and all that, it in quote and unquote makes sense for people to, be, to begin to save in, uh, in dollar. That way they can preserve in quotes the value of the Naira. All right. And it will now mean that if they want to um, um, engage transactions in Naira, they can withdraw in dollars and sell to the parallel market. But let's not forget that the central bank has also had rolled out policies in recent times banning sale of, um, banning BDC the exchange, all right, in, in, in the parallel market, quote unquote. So people can now um, seek to get dollars from the official market, which of course comes with its own bottlenecks and all that. So it's in the case of um, trying to be, be ahead of these um, ecosystem of poor currency management that will find a situation where there's been a hike in dollar savings and people are trying to save Naira, all right, save the value of their Naira in dollars, as well as to um, um, position themselves in such a way that they can do more uh, in terms of engagement, buying and selling across and within borders. Now, on the disadvantage,
basis of that is that we get to find a situation where the Nigerian economy begins to becomes dollarized over time, meaning that the level of dollar transactions even within the Nigerian economy would grow. All right, so meaning that uh, people can now save and people can now withdraw in dollars. And what that what will happen is that you may start seeing some mom and pop shops that will start charging in dollars, consultants will start charging in dollars, and they start making a case for it. And that would continually suppress the value of the naira or reduce or worsen the value of the naira because now you brought the dollar home as a means of exchange and as an unofficial means of exchange so that's what we'll be dealing with and it's going to be a very difficult situation for the central bank going forward i want you to expand further on you know how this affects the nigerian economy um you know okay. the more and more people continue to all you know lose faith in the current in the uh, naira and of course uh, save in the dollar in different um, uh, uh, platforms um, does this in any way show that there might be hope for improvement on the Nigerian economy and the exchange rate? And how can you convince people no. otherwise? All right. It, it doesn't primarily show that there's hope. It just means that the system is in a state of chaos, in a sense. Now, the only way that can turn to a positive hope, in court is if the central bank chooses to moderate that dollarization in the sense, all right, as a second currency in the Nigerian economy, <laughs> if it seeks to officiate, if it seeks to officially say that, okay, dollar is now an official currency within the Nigerian economy, that's the only way they can begin to draw some fair balance, all right, and minimize the level of leakage or um, the spillover effect, all right, of the current state of dollarization, all right. But I don't see that happening anytime in the short term. So that's why I say it's likely. Um, doesn't bring some form of hope to the Nigerian economy, all right? And the adverse effect will be high over time. Now, what does this mean for the Naira? It means that the, 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 the value of Naira in the parallel market will start worsening at a relatively faster pace. And that's because more people now have dollars to sell and are seeking to engage dollars exchange. And they would even do that all right, on a one-on-one on -one level. So now you don't have to go to a BDC or go to a bank. I can walk into the bank now, withdraw $2,000 and seek to sell to probably an ETA at probably an exchange rate we both can agree on, all right? So there's going to be a decentralization, a further decentralization of the parallel market. And now don't forget that there are both key effects and the likes have taken the rates down. So there are going to be different rates in the parallel market, and uh, people would want to take the laws into their hands. And at that level, um, it's really going to be bad for the Naira in terms of the value of the Naira, in terms of the perceived value of the Naira in the global space, and in terms of monetary system or policy development vis-a-vis um, -vis what's currently happening in the global space. Um, the central bank would be seen as an institution that cannot control its currency or manage its economy effectively. And as well, increase the chances of leakages within the Nigerian economy. So those are the fears, except the central bank chooses to, all right, say, all right, we now say that we now accept dollar as a second currency and all of that, uh, which I don't see happening in the short term. All right, you actually just forestalled the next question I was going to ask you, which, you know, um, it, it concerns this Aboki FX, um, the fact that he has suspended publication of rates on their website. Now, we know how the CBN said, you know, Aboki FX and all that are engaging in illegal for, illegal um, trading and all of that. And uh, now that they have suspended that, yes, there are other websites as well that go ahead and publish these. And even the rates on the streets, on the black market are different. So regarding this, how do you think this might affect what the market is saying, saying that there might be different price and different rates on different websites and on the streets as well. Okay, so what, what may happen is there may be a base price in terms of you cannot sell um, dollar below this price. Mm -hmm. But off that base price, base price, there will be so much um, 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 rates that people will be selling. So that's going to lead to some level of um, poor market coordination or alignment in the sense. And to permit him to the, uh, to the, to the formal markets at some point, all right? So, and, um, and people will begin to um, um, channel those increases into the cost of doing, uh, cost of operating, mm -hmm. cost of operating, and then cost of operations rather, and then uh, the cost of business goods and services in the mid to long term. So what we now say is that inflation and the cost of goods and services would begin to pick up on some particular industries faster than some particular industries. Meaning, for instance, when you look at the FMCG space, the demand for foreign exchange is very much higher there 
relatively than other um, sectors. All right, so that would mean that people will start sourcing for these currencies over time. And once they start sourcing from well decentralized states and individuals who are willing to sell and all that, it will now mean that there will be different price structures in the Nigerian economy as when it comes to uh, buying goods and services and. Uh, consumers would have no option than to have to deal with those um, ripple effects in a sense and to be very unfair on the, on the average Nigerian in the big term. Mm. Okay. There's also um, conversations about the e Naira and, you know, other incentives that the government is trying to, you know, bring in to hopefully strengthen uh, the confidence in the Naira and, of course, uh, you know, doing business with the Naira. How um, effective do you think these things will be? So um, currently, we need to understand, first of all, that the bane of what the central bank is dealing with is structural, all right? So whether you introduce the in era or you do not introduce the in era, it simply means that until you deal with the structural problems around productivity, systems and business productivity, all right, and open up, uh, 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 deal with access to market-related challenges, we may not be positioned in a place where the Naira will become um, of value, all right, to the average Nigerian, or even vis-a-vis -vis transactions in, across and within borders. Now, that is to say that even though the central bank launches the e Naira today, which you know, the institution plans to do, it doesn't still reduce the fact that the value of that currency is over time, all right, um, worsening in the sense, all right. So, in, in era of the fact that the views to be not just on them of trying to digitize the, uh, the monetary system and all that, but also dealing with the structural problem. Now, I was speaking in a Zoom meeting yesterday and I mentioned that if Nigeria fixes power, by 50%, the Naira will appreciate. Mm. All right, if we can fix power by 50%, the Naira will appreciate. And what that simply means is that fixing power with over, you know, with a cross board increased productivity, number one, it will reduce cost of operations for businesses, number two, it will increase household cost of living. You'll be shocked, you'll be shocked the percentage of income households spend on a weekly basis on fuel and generator services. All right, so it will reduce all those things drastically and as well as it create more income bandwidth for the average Nigerian to spend, all right, to take care of their kids, to pay house rent, and to improve the quality of their lives. All right, equally as well for businesses, productivity will increase because the cost of operations has decreased. All right, and all that will form um, the supply, sorry, the demand structure, all right, to reduce the demand structure. Um, for for uh, uh, for dollar exchange and all of that, and uh, Naira will begin to find its levels. So the argument for and against um, um, market de demand and supply of a Naira would be balanced because productivity has come into the picture, and that's the pain for which the Naira will grow in value. All right. So the e Naira does not necessarily increase or improve the productivity of the currency. All right, it's still the same currency at a worsening state. It just means that you are engaging with those currency dynamics on different platforms and um, having different experiences trying to interact and all that. But it doesn't necessarily mean things will be cheaper. It doesn't necessarily mean cost of living will drop. And it doesn't necessarily mean that cost of transactions on the e space right now would be cheaper because it's in error. No, it's still going to be expensive because the value of that currency is worsening. Mm. You've told us the advantages and disadvantages of saving in, in, in dollars. But from your own perspective as an economic analyst, would you advise Nigerians for their own personal advantage you know, to save their money in dollars? So let me just, um, I would answer this question with another um, scenario. Okay. Take for instance, there's a growing argument that investments should begin so people nigerians for instance should begin to seek dollar-based investments why that's because um they're much more relatively stable and you're dealing with a currency that is much more um of value all right and won't drop anytime soon and all that it's just it's just a matter of choosing the right investment for yourself so there are increasing conversations on how can you do more with the Naira, all right, in a relatively failing economy? And one of those options is begin to rethink savings in currencies that appreciate over time, which is dollar, sorry, investment in currencies that appreciate over time, which is dollar in this case, or investments that appreciate over time, which is real estate and some other um, um, uh, sectoral related investments over time. So that's to say that uh, 
if you have the capacity to save in dollars, honestly, please do, because you will be intelligently seeking to hedge against risk. Because if you leave your monies in Naira, one million Naira today, as at um, 22nd September 2021, will not be of the same value in 2022, and it will worsen in 2023 because when an election year comes with an election year comes uncertainties around spending uncertainties around um, all of this dynamics in a sense all right and and, and the narrow literally get you a thousand by then <laughs> and i'll be happy to take this interview again <laughs> to refer you back to this okay well um quickly uh, final question for me what are your predictions uh, between now and christmas and of course january 2022 um how do you see the naira faring well, I'm, I'm not trying to be a prophet of doom, but it's going to worsen. It's going to worsen, or if it even has a chance to get better for one particular reason. Before things get better, there must be structures and systems in place for us to see those results. The way economic indicators work, all right, they work on the basis of actions or premeditated actions that have happened over time prior to the real time. All right. So meaning that if, if dollar is going to improve by December, January, the CBA needs to start taking some actions now and we need to start seeing those actions. But unfortunately, the actions we are seeing at the moment are seeking to patch or either worsen the situation in one way or the other. So it technically means that if you project that forward with what we're seeing now, the Naira will worsen in, in the coming months. I cannot tell exactly at a particular rate, but it's likely going to surpass 600 by January 2022. Most wow. likely going to surpass 600 by January 2022. And that's because um, the, the actions and the, the premeditated actions or inactions, all right, is reinforcing or redistributing the market, which is also worsening the value of the Naira. Until productivity is a view, all right, either by fixing critical infrastructure or dealing with structural issues, the Naira cannot appreciate in any way. Interesting one there, um, Mr. Gospel Obele, economic analyst. We really have um, had a better understanding regarding um, the Naira, the dollar, and how really it has been. And regarding this forecast, you know, the only one who shares such sentiments. Lots of other economic analysts feel that, you know, it's going to get up to 1,000 Naira, you know, very soon. And that really is, is very sad for our economy. Really hoping and looking towards all those um, structural adjustments um, that you've mentioned exactly. to make sure the Naira um, can hold its weight. Thank you again, Mr. Obili. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. Good morning. Good morning. All right. It's been a pretty wet Wednesday morning across Lagos. Um, and of course, uh, we've been here to guide you all through to start off your day. Uh, but this is where we will be wrapping up. If you missed out on any of our very interesting conversations, um, remember where to catch up. It's simply at Plus TV Africa on Facebook, Instagram, and our YouTube channel. Same with our new YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Osal Gui Ogbon. And I am Aneta Felix. Bye-bye.